Hello students, uh, in this module we will uh, discuss about the wide band core wide band uh, CDMA systems and uh, the UMTS. Uh, this uh, discussion will go on, go on in two halves mainly, the first part will be here and uh, in the next module we will discuss about the mainly the um, specifications of this WCDMA network. Uh, so, in this model, what is WCDMA, how it, what, how did it evolve and what are the key features of this we will be discussing. This uh, wideband uh, code division multiple access, it is uh, standard basically for the third generation mobile communication systems. Second, from second generation to third generation mobile communication systems actually uh, it evolved because the second generation mobile communication system based on the IS 95 was a very big success worldwide and uh, so people asked for some whatever the data rate we could achieve in the second generation mainly from there we tried to put uh, ourselves forward and to go ahead with a higher data rate communication fundamentally from that need the movement uh, to um, generate the specification for the uh, WCDMA started. Uh, so, the standard came up also according to this WCDMA and this standard is also part of this uh, group of the sand standards known as the universal mobile telecommunication system or uh, the third generation partnership project and the international mobile telecommunications IMT 2000. So, basically um, there are the group of standards uh, running at this moment and uh, was running at that moment and WCDMA is a part of all these uh, standards. And uh, what are the key features uh, let us quickly look into from the second generation we tried to um, bring of to de device uh, third generation mobile communication system. So, the systems and uh, the demands were uh, something like this. The International Telecommunication Union they announced that uh, the goals for the next generation I mean the third generation system uh, will be like this. We have to provide better spectral efficiency provide the higher data rates, higher peak data rates at least up to 2 Mbps in the indoor and uh, 384 kilobit per second for the outdoor and uh, correspondingly there will be a choice of the bandwidth for the higher data rate of 2 Mbps. They provided the bandwidth of 5 megahertz and for 384 kilobit per second outdoor at least the bandwidth extended for 200 kilohertz. The demand is that second generation only voice communication used to go and for third generation the command uh, the demand came that the support for the multimedia applications uh, is uh, required which meaning is what the transmission of the voice, the arbitrary data, text, picture, audio and video everything should be now uh, possible over the communication network. So, it is basically enhancing the data rate enabling the flexibility and the choice of the data rates also for to support the variable kind of the application because the data rates support for your voice transmission and the video transmission and text transmission they are not same. So, for independent applications if we demand it to demand a different kind of the uh, data rates to be involved. So, 3G actually basically supports uh, all this uh, different kind of the data rates and that also the position specific you mean the indoor data rate and outdoor data rates are different. And the most important part that ITU told that you have to have a backward compatibility with the second generation means whatever the market at that moment or the 2G systems especially the handsets all the network components the deployed network. Uh, all should be supported the 3G network should support a 2G mobile phone and a 2G infrastructure. So, the data that is getting generated in a 2G network also should be able to now operate uh, 3G should not discard all the 2G phones that was the demand that is the meaning of backward compatibility. In Europe, uh, the research uh, started, the activity started uh, with the goal in the early 1990s and um, the first standard that came up in the formal process uh, within this European Telecommunication Standard uh, Institute which we called ETSI 
and they came up fast with some uh, solution and based on the earlier the list of the requirements that ITU gave and we have discussed several proposals came. Some proposal was few of them were the based of orthogonal frequency division multiplexing or wave DM solution. Some of them were over the broadband time division multiple access based systems. Some of them were the CDMA based protocols on the physical layer and uh, uh, in the year of 1998 based on all these devel different developments that were going on two major drugs were selected. One was the broadband CDMA, another is TCDMA with joint detection. What is this? The broadband CDMA is basically the FDD mode, where it is basically a CDMA system, but you will have two different frequency channels for the downlink and the uplink. So, simultaneous transmission in the downlink and uplink if you wish to do, then you have to switch over the transmission frequencies. And uh, that was the understanding of the broadband uh, CDMA and TCDMA or the time code division uh, CDMA multiple access actually it is. They call it sometimes as a JD, uh, JDTD TCDMA, I mean joint detection and your time code division multiple access is known as uh, something called a TDD mode. I mean uh, when actually uplink and downlink will go on, they will be time differentiated. So, when the downlink will be going on, uplink will be stopped and after certain interval there will be separate slot for the downlink and separate slot for the uplink that was the idea that was in 1998 and uh, this FDD mode and TDD mode are to jointly people started talking started naming them jointly as the WCDMA. So, wideband code division multiple access broadly actually uh, under the umbrella under the name of the WCDMA we basically means the two different proposals one is uh, the broadband uh, CDMA or uh, which is a basically FDD system another is the uh, JD uh, TCDMA which is the joint detection and the time code division multiple access basically it is a TDD system. And um, uh, if you ask me what is this uh, difference between the WCDMA and UMTS, WCDMA is mostly the access technology, radio access technology. Uh, which is named after WCDMA, how the access is going on in the FDD mode or in the TDD mode and whereas the UMTS actually says the radio access as well as the structure of the core network. So, that in total the whole network complete system if I try to see then this is a uh, UMTS and now these two systems uh, were then included in this uh, European proposal for this IMT 2000 family. And at the same time almost uh, from Japan there was another proposal for this WCDMA system which was fairly similar to European system proposal and uh, so, but, um, uh, but actually nobody was ready in that whole uh, standardization group from the multiple units and the multiple industry houses who were participating and driving the, uh, no, driving the whole standardization, none of them could merge. And uh, besides this uh, Japanese proposal, uh, the Japanese and European proposal, uh, there were actually uh, another support for this uh, CDMA 2000 proposals. Do you remember the CDMA 2000 was a brainchild for the Qualcomm who actually mm, uh, first uh, brought the IS95 and then actually they uh, changed it, upgraded it for the CDMA 2000 and IS95 was a very big hit. So, uh, European uh, proposals, European most of the US uh, countries they preferred the CDMA 2000 to be deployed. So, mm, uh, there were actually lot of the proposals and uh, like the whole research community of worldwide actually they got divided into separate uh, and independent actually proposal, they got started supporting independent proposals. Few other sub proposals were something like this enhanced data rate for the GSM evolution, digital enhanced cordless telecommunication universal wireless communication. So, they were the typical proposals that came up, but what finally happened is uh, surprisingly. Uh, so, it was uh, it was thinking something nothing nowhere actually the standardization is getting um, converged and over the years it was uh, seen to be uh, uh, coming a deadlock kind of and uh, ITU finally decided to avoid all this deadlock let us accept all the proposals. So, they accepted all the proposals under the umbrella of IMT 2000 to be as a 3G, a 3G communication. So, there were 5 at most uh, the standards that are coming up under the 
big umbrella of the 3G and it was very hard actually for the now the service providers as well as the device manufacturers to uh, follow a typical uh, standard and then uh, to device and deploy the networks. How then the actually intercommunication between the networks, two networks will happen that also a very big question. And um, after some time in the year of 2000 and all, then China came up with a standard called they called it is a TDSCDMA. It is a time division synchronous code division multiple access. It also gained some go very big amount of the attention and then the WiMAX also came in between. So, uh, then actually when the deployment came, the Japan was the first to deploy the 3G networks and then they, they never actually followed uh, something uh, which is uh, truly that IMD 2000 uh, driven or actually truly a 3G network. They actually followed their own kind of the network their own kind of the specification and uh, the original specification when IQ released it became a release 99 and later on actually they moved from that initial proposal all these five proposals to a new one which was basically the high HSPA or the high speed uh, packet access kind of the network which was the first realized in the downlink and as well as in the uplink later on. So, when the 3GPP was moving and uh, all the advantages came in between all those five uh, initial proposals, it became a very serious problem because uh, how to maintain the spe specification itself, specification became so big because for all these independent five different stages and their uh, corresponding involvements and improvements, if people wish to keep the track then the uh, document itself become a very, very big. And um, then actually that is why because of lot of struggle and lot of fighting in, be between, in between all the companies and all and the delay happened, a lot of delay happened uh, in the, uh, happened to deploy the uh, network, 3G network in the actual practice in the practice and finally it came around 2005 when 3G first found to be deployed. And uh, that was in the Japan and Japan was the fastest one and he never followed actually the full UMTS specification. He followed something called FOMA, it was a Japanese version of his own UMTS standard. And uh, when this development um, happened actually uh, the second generation Japanese uh, digital cellular basically actually that was the um, the second generation it reached its capacity, total capacity, the second generation communication, digital communication network it, it ha attended its uh, maximum capacity or the limit. So, that is why FOMA came into picture and Japan immediately and very fast Japan deployed their own kind of the third generation communication. The alternative to this um, uh, FOMA, another one came up which is called the personal community system, personal communication system, so which could not actually demand the uh, uh, completely it could not meet up the demand. So, fundamentally if we look into the UMTS or this WCDMA, we will have a very quick look over the physical layers that uh, came up in under the 3G communication. It was uh, the physical layer communication if you see it is uh, basically the communication between a mobile station and a base station via the AR interface and UMTS standard they uses uh, some typical name for the mobile set as well as the base station. It was unusual abbreviation the first time got introduced. They named the mobile station as the user equipment and the base station they started calling it node B in the UMTS standard. Actually when we developed the 4G in the after 3G. So, it also came with uh, with this almost same kind of the name, it, it was user equipment EV and the uh, extended node B or E node B for the 4G specification. Whatever it is uh, in the third, let us come back to the 3G. Uh, the WCDME AR interface basically they prefer to use the code division multiple access uh, for distinguishing between different users and also uh, varying the data rate support and also for the control channels. And we distinguish between the spreading codes and that are responsible for the bandwidth expansion of the signals and uh, the scrambling codes that are mainly they were, uh, they were there to distinguish between the signals from the different mobile stations. And uh, so, two different codes were there, the spreading codes were responsible for the bandwidth expansion inside the users and then 
coming from the different mobile stations and uh, distinguishing between the different base station another rate another set of basically the coding was utilized which uh, they named as a scramble coding or scrambling code. Uh, top of that WCDMA shows a time slot architecture. Uh, time slot means uh, the, the whole time axis is divided into smaller units called the 10 milliseconds. Each of these smaller units it was subdivided into some slots. The slot size was 0 0.67 milliseconds and depending upon your location uh, within a time slot a symbol might have the different meaning also. And uh, WCDMA they utilized a number of the logical channels for the data as well as the control information and they mapped then all these logical channels into the physical channels. These physical channels are actually um, uh, generated that can be distinguished from each other by means of the spreading codes, by means of the scrambling codes and the position within the time slot. So, they do not did not use only the codes, they also utilize the location information within the time slot as a part of your identification. Uh, so, they used uh, the logical channels, physical channels that was the basic difference between your logical and physical channels. If you look inside the network architecture, how mobile network uh, provider uh, may introduce a UMTS, uh, we have to distinguish between the two stuff, one is the radio access network and another is the core network. Remember the mobile station and the UMTS terrestrial radio access network communicate with each other via the air interface. This terrestrial radio ac architecture UTRAN but uh, radio um, uh, access network, this access network and the mobile station they talk to each other via the air interface. That is basically the uh, wireless channel over which the mobile station and the radio access network will be connected to each other. Now, this UTRAN consists of the multiple uh, radio network subsystems, each of which contains the several radio network controllers and then uh, each of which controls one or several base stations which we call the node B. So, UTRAN consists of multiple radio network subsystem, each radio network subsystem will have the multiple number of the net radio network controllers. We have seen actually in the last slide. Uh, uh, the CDMA network architecture. So, there if we come back from the radio network subsystem, in the radio network subsystem you will have the multiple number of radio network controllers and inside the radio network controllers under radio network controllers you will see multiple number of the base stations which they are calling the node B's. Core network it connects the different radio network subsystems with each other and also it allows uh, a typical radio network architecture to connect radio network subsystem, it allows also to connect a network with some completely other network like your ISDN or packet networks. This core network now can be based on an upgraded GSM and core network or GSM core network or it might be actually completely new implemented completely new based on the internet over the IP. So, it is a IP based network. The network functionalities for the packet data they are similar to the ones of the general GPRS services, the general packet radio services. Uh, so, in another way if you try to see the total network architecture of this WCDMA UMTS, it will be looking like this. So, you have uh, uh, one defi definition in the user equipment domain, another one is in the infrastructure domain. So, user equipment basically earlier was the mobile station. So, there actually that architecture is such that you will have it will consist of basically the user service identity module and uh, the mobile equipment consists of some terminal equipment, terminal adapter and some mobile termination. Uh, infrastructure domain if we try to see you will see first the access network domain which consists of this UTRAN and the core network domain which domain in this domain you will have the interworking unit, it will you will see the serving network, the transit network, the home network and the application network. And remember this interworking unit we will be referring on in the next module and we will also see that different modules in the core network as well as the radio access network, the connection between radio access network to the core network 
there are some dedicated interfaces and all the interfaces are uh, basically are defined by their kind of connection and the kind of the data they are uh, they are uh, they are uh, passing and uh, also their capacity kind of by means of kind of data i mean mm, whether they are the traffic the data traffic they are passing or they are uh, passing the control information or they are passing the management information so based on all this actually the interfaces are different interfaces get different and interfaces are also getting assigned a typical number we will see all the numbers in the next module so here in the fundamentals of the uh, in this module what we have learnt is we have seen the uh, wireless code division multiple access fundamental network architecture and we have learnt already that in this um, wcdma instead of the mobile station the we will be calling them as the user equipments the user equipments and the base stations all the of them will be called as the node bees instead of the base stations and the multiple such base stations if you remember multiple such base stations will be communicating with each other or connected with we will be connected with each other by the radio uh, network uh, controllers and uh, multiple such radio network controllers will be actually connected to each other inside the core network and uh, which is the radio network subsystems is rnss and uh, this radio network subsystem will allow you also not only to get connected with in, in between the uh, mobile stations or in between the base stations this uh, radio network um, rnss will also allow you to get connected with uh, the other similar kind of the network or completely different kind of the networks for example isdn or your packet data network so and the wcdma as we understand that there was uh, no common standard uh, there were almost five standards from the five different uh, there are five different proposals came in the 3g uh, under the block uh, umbrella of the broad umbrella of the 3g and because of the time constraint and because of uh, non convergence of all the members uh, all those five uh, different specifications were initially approved by itu as a third generation so that's why the 3g communication network um, if we try to see though basically it is a cdma based communication but proposals were also there for the wave dm based network so partially though cdma was a very famous uh, and it was actually wcdma was a very big uh, fly later on also but uh, slowly slowly actually we will see that the third we people started realizing that uh, maintaining the specification of a huge amount i mean of multiple technologies multiple proposals and their corresponding advantages and not only the maintenance of the specification its deployment and converging the multiple kind of the 3g networks and exchanging the data between the multiple kind of the 3g networks people really face that this will be a huge problem in future and uh, so therefore they slowly you will see that if you see the history of the mobile communication slowly people started confirming uh, realize after realizing this problem they started slowly actually converging a partnership program that we call a 3gpp partnership program and uh, in under the they formed the 3gpp platform uh, where actually they told that uh, uh, from then next onwards so next onwards there will be a single proposal approved for a typical uh, for a specification for it please specification for a typical technology for a next generation for a typical generation a typical uh, uh, a single technology will be standardized and according to that worldwide actually the network will be deployed it won't be actually a repetition of the 3g network uh, the way it moved in the next module we will see little bit more about the wcdma infrastructure and the interfaces